back with day 11. Um, after some of the work on the problems we were working on in, today in class, I wanted to do a video just on um, reviewing the difference between average rate of change and average value. Right, we see this word average show up both times. It can be very confusing at times to know which one that they are talking about. First off, let's look at the definitions really quick just to make sure we have those down. These are again on the flashcards. I added a couple flashcards, so make sure you're doing those every night. Um, every bus ride to school, things like that, right? Rather than updating your LinkedIn profile, go ahead and uh, check those Quizlet cards out. Okay, so average rate of change first off. Average rate of change of F on a, B. So the average rate of change of F on A, B equals F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Again, average rate of change gets used quite often on this exam. But so does average value. Both get used often, and we got to know which one to use in which scenario. Average value of F. So there's average rate of change. Average value on AB. That's our integral formula of 1 over B minus A, integral from A to B of F of X dx. Both of these formulas get used. Um, odds are you'll have to do both at least once. Some, sometimes you have to do both of them two or three times. Okay? So I want to talk about this in terms of especially um, position velocity acceleration. So let's talk about average velocity. questions from today asked about an average velocity, okay? Now that can be thought of in two different ways. We can think of it as an average rate of change or an average value. We want average velocity. We're going to calculate this. This can be calculated in two different ways. Let's look at it as an average rate of change first. Think of average velocity as an average rate of change. You have to think, what is, what, you know, what are we taking the rate of change of to get velocity? Well, velocity is the rate of change of position. So if you want to use the average rate of change formula, right? Let's look at average velocity on, I don't know, let's say zero ten. Okay, we can calculate this in two ways. We can do use average rate of change. But it's got to be using the position formula. So it would be x of 10 minus x of 0 over 10 minus 0. Okay. Because position, the rate of change of position is velocity, right? Doing the derivative of position gives us velocity. The average rate of change of position, by definition, would be the average velocity. So if we had a position equation and they wanted you to figure out the average velocity, we'd do the average rate of change of our position formula. But that's usually not the case. When they ask for average velocity, often, I'd say the majority of the time, we are going to be dealing with a velocity equation. If we have a velocity equation, we just want the average value of that velocity equation. Okay. So this is if you're given x of t. If you're given x of t, use average rate of change. If you're given v of t, and they ask you for average velocity, we just want the average value of the v of t equation that we have. So we're going to do 1 over b minus a, integral from a to b of v of t dt. 
these two equations are equal. They will both give us the average velocity. Now, if you have the V of T equation, I would just use this one right here. Right? This gives you average velocity. If you had the position equation, I would use this one right here. X of 10 minus X of 0 over 10 minus 0. Those are exactly the same things. Okay? And if you think about it, if you cover up this 1 over 10 in front of the average value, what that 0 to 10 integral of V of T dt, that just gives you your displacement. Well, this is also your displacement, your position final minus position initial. So they're really the exact same equation. Okay? Let's say I wanted average acceleration. They might ask you, what's the average acceleration? Well, I can calculate average acceleration in two different ways as well. I can use my average value or my average rate of change. All right, let's say it's average acceleration on 0, 06. Well, I could to use average value, I'll use the average value, the integral formula first. I want this would be helpful if I had the acceleration equation. Well, I do 1 over 6 integral 0 to 6 of a of t dt. This right here would calculate my average acceleration. Average rate of change then I would to use that formula, right? They both calculate averages. I have to think about what function, if I do the rate of change, gives me acceleration. Well, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So I could also do V of 6 minus V of 0 over 6 minus V of 0. So they both could be used. It just depends on what you have. If they want the average of something, a function or an equation that you already have, do the average value formula, the integral formula. If the average you want is of something that you need, that you have to have the rate of change of, then use average rate of change. Let me show you one example of what I mean by this. It's an example that we saw. It's an example that we saw um, today in class. I just made one up that's similar to formula. Okay, so let's say this. Um, a particle's position, or sorry, a particle's velocity is modeled by V of T equals 2 plus 5 sine T squared over 10. Um, 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 4. Okay, so that's what we know. We're given the velocity equation. The question is, at what time t is the average, is the instantaneous velocity equal to the average velocity. Okay. That's the question. At what time t is the instantaneous velocity equal to the average velocity? Well, the instantaneous velocity is just what I, what I when I plug in a t value into v of t, what it spits out, that number, when I trace, right, if I trace 2 on my V of t, that tells me the instantaneous velocity. But I want to know the time when the instantaneous velocity equals the average velocity. Well, if you get a question like this, the first thing we have to do is figure out what the average velocity is. I can't find the instantaneous velocity until I know what that average velocity is. And this is exactly what I'm talking about with the difference between average rate of change and average value. So I want average velocity. So I could either do the average value of velocity, or I could do the average rate of change of position. 
and I'm going to choose which one I'm going to do based on what was given to me. If I notice here, what I was given is velocity. So the average velocity, I want to do the average value of this thing. So the first thing I need to do is figure out the average value of velocity on the interval 0 to 4. So the average value is going to be 1 over 4 integral 0 to 4 of v of t dt. Okay, that's the first thing I need to do. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to do this problem on my calculator. So, here's what I've got. Let's clear out this stuff. Okay. So my velocity equation is, shoot, I wrote it down. Okay, here it is. My velocity equation is 2 plus 5 sine, I'll put my fraction in, t squared over 10. I'm going to graph that because I'm going to need that graph eventually. Okay. So now I'm just going to calculate this average velocity. So I'm going to do 1 fourth math 9 integral 0 to 4. And instead of retyping out that whole equation, I'm going to hit alpha calc y1 dx. So when I calculate that thing out, I get an average velocity of 4.217, okay? But really, it's 4.217039993, okay? So that's my average velocity. I'm going to write down all of those digits, okay? All right, so let's go back and write that down. This gives me my average velocity. My average velocity is 4.217039993. So from 0 to 4, that's my average, how fast, my average velocity on that interval. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my graphing calculator. And I'm just going to look at this velocity function on an appropriate window. Okay? I want to go 0 to 4 because that was my range for t. Okay. And I'll just go, yeah, maybe 0 to 10 here. Now the, the number you get should make sense on this graph, right? My graph starts at 2, it finishes up at about 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the average should be between 2 and 7. So it's around, it's at, at 4. Okay, what I want to figure out is when does this velocity graph when does the instantaneous match the, the average? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to store this value. I'm going to say this thing equals little a. Okay? And now what I want to know is, I want to know at what time does v of t equals a. So, I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to store that answer I got as the letter A. Okay, and I have an error syntax. Let's do a go to. Get an error on there, that's okay. I'm going to go up and grab that number and just hit store. Okay, so now I got that thing stored so I don't have to keep typing it out. Now what I want to do is I want to graph that average velocity. When I graph that average velocity, now it's going to be very easy for me to figure out what time the average velocity misses, mit, um, is equal to the instantaneous. This is the average velocity, this is the instantaneous, the blue line here. Red line is average. They are going to be the same where they intersect. So I'll do second, 
trick, second calc, intersect number five. And I'm close enough. I'm just going to hit enter, enter, enter. And they're going to equal each other when t equals 2.143. They're going to say b of t equals a when t equals 2.413. If they ask for units, I would provide units. I didn't give you any units, so that's our answer. Okay. But we needed to know which one to use for the, to calculate that average velocity. If I would have been given a position equation, if they gave me x of t equals, then I would have done x of 4 minus x of 0 over 4 minus 0. I would have calculated that out and got a number. Then I would have stored that number, graphed the number, and I'd have to also graph v to figure out where it is. Right? So I'd need to get my velocity equation at some point in time to figure out where they intersect. Okay, so the other way I see them ask about this is they might say something like this. They might say, explain the meaning of one-fourth integral zero to four of v of t dt. Anytime they ask you to explain the meaning, and it's an integral with a fraction out front, we should be thinking average value, right? If they ask, what's the meaning of this? This would be, this is the average And it's the average of whatever is right here. So if it's v of t, this is the average velocity of the particle. And again, whenever they ask you to explain, we got to talk about these two numbers. The average velocity of the particle between t equals 0 and t equals 4. If they get, if they ask you to explain the meaning of this, once again, that would be the average velocity from t equals two to t equals eight. Now you might say, well, shouldn't it be one over eight minus two? Well, they just simplified eight minus two to get six. Okay. So that's it for today. Um, I will talk to you guys later. Two chains by E.